Welcome to the Simpler Business Podcast, where we talk about ways to do what you love and serve your people in a way that brings you income and freedom. I'm your host, Marissa Roberts. Join me as I chat with my favorite entrepreneurs about how they simplify their biz so that you can simplify yours. My guest today can speak from first-hand experience about juggling work and family life and how tricky that can be. So many of us start our own business because we're looking for more flexibility, the opportunity to work from home, do something around the kids or other personal commitments. And while it's certainly worth it, it's not easy, especially in the first few years of building your business. Now, the pandemic and the years since then have seen the rise of the gig economy, with more and more people turning to side hustles that they could build alongside their work life or their family life. And we're all familiar with companies like Uber, DoorDash, Sidekicker, all great options for making extra money, but not amazing in terms of training and support. So either you go it on your own with your own business or you go it on your own with your side hustle. (laughs) Until now. Susan Toft is the founder and CEO of award-winning Australian mobile laundry service, The Laundry Lady, and her business model is shaking up the idea of the gig economy. The Laundry Lady is a great solution for those looking to run a business from home or those interested in side hustles with a smooth and simple business model and technology and innovations that can help and support you while scaling your business. With a career spanning corporate marketing, event management, and project management, Susan first launched The Laundry Lady on the Gold Coast in 2012. She has steered the business from 200K revenue to $6 million in the past four years, continuing to grow despite cost of living pressures. Laundry Lady now has a team of 300 plus contractors Australia-wide, and in 2023, broke into the New Zealand market too. Susan is a champion for women in the workplace, bringing time and flexibility back to mums, dads, career changes, and more with her innovative and market-leading independent contractor model. Living on the Sunshine Coast, Queensland, Susan is an active member of the local business community and a member of the Sunshine Coast Business Women's Network. She was also featured on the latest season of Shark Tank Australia, where her vision to tackle the never-ending laundry pile wowed the sharks. She's passionate about connecting people by leveraging technology and AI-driven advancements and created Time Boss, an online marketplace and enterprise planning resource system to power Laundry Lady and other people-focused businesses. I cannot wait to hear more. All of those things are interesting for me and I know they are for you too. So Susan, welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. That's an awesome introduction. If you could just follow me around and intro me like that all the time, that'd be great. (laughs) Isn't it funny how we, we're so in the thick of what we do that we don't often get a chance to sit back and go, oh, hang on a minute, this is yes. what I've done. Totally, totally. You honestly, <laughs> I love that you've taken a business idea but also really run it with the the mindset and the ethics of I want to take this business model and use it to help people, like not just help the customers but help the contractors as well. And I think that's why when I first discovered The Laundry Lady, I was so impressed because it really had that even balance of supporting both arms and you don't see that everywhere in business, do you? No, that's that's it. And, you know, that really stemmed from my own experience because I was a new mum. I was working in a corporate career. I was working for Austrade for eight years and I was traveling all the time, traveling back and forth to Sydney, going international and, you know, exciting career before you have kids. But once you have kids, it's really hard to juggle all of that and be the mum that you want to be as well and be there with your kids, but still, you know, remain true to the fact that you want to work and contribute and all of those things. And so um, I actually was made redundant from that position and just knew I needed to create something where I could work from home because I just, I needed that flexibility with young kids at home. And so that was really where the idea stemmed from, from my own experience of just, you know, knowing that I needed that flexibility and, and also looking at my own laundry pile and thinking about <laughs> how much I needed help with getting on top of that. Um, and so, I, you know, I kind of always had this vision right from when I very first started it that I would be bringing that opportunity to other women or mums or anyone who wants, you know, that flexibility. Um, I don't think I'd quite envisioned it would 
scale as much as it has and as much as we're planning. But, um, you know, I think at the time I thought oh, I'll get 20, 20 other mums up and running and 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 help them to have this, this same kind of flexible business. So, yeah, that's really where, that, where the whole idea has come from. It's totally snowballed. It's amazing. And you know what? I can relate so much to that story because my story very much mirrors yours. I was working in corporate. I had some travel to do with my job. I adored my job. I was good at my job. I went on mat leave. Of course, I adore my family as well. But I did four years of mat leave in a row and then I went back to corporate and it, the, the world had changed because I went back as a mother, right? So people assumed I didn't want to travel anymore and people assumed I didn't want to do all the exciting new projects anymore because I was busy at home with the kids. Uh, but they would still roster me on to work six weeks in a row from 11 p.m. till 8 p.m. including weekends. And I'm like, what? My kids are in bed when I get home anyway. Why aren't I doing the fun stuff if I'm still, you know, it was one of those things for me. So that's why yeah. I left corporate. And I start, my original business was an organizing business. And I remember two months in, I left corporate because I wanted more freedom. I wanted to work around the kids. Two months in, I was burning out. I was like still working more than full-time hours, going and helping other mums organize their homes. And my house was a complete mess. <laughs> and I was <laughs> too tired to see my kids because I didn't have like a structure to follow. I was completely winging it. And you're winging it in gaps of time during the day when you've got young kids at home with you. You don't get six, seven solid hours of focused work time. So yeah, to hear that background kind of makes me go, Wish I had found you 12 years ago myself. <laughs> <laughs> it would have made my road a lot smoother. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Oh. It's it's so hard, you know, to make that change when when you are a mum and then and then go and build a business. What a great idea. That's it's the hardest thing possible. <laughs> but um, and that's what we've really, you know, focused very heavily on is creating an opportunity that's just easy for people to tap into and get up and running really quickly and earning really quickly um, and really consistent regular earnings as well. So um, it, that's what our whole model kind of feeds off. I really love that. Let's talk a little bit about the model too because I know a lot of our listeners are familiar with the idea of the gig economy because, you know, they hear about Uber, Uber Eats, Menu Log, that sort of thing. Um, the Laundry Lady, I thought this was a really interesting take because it's comparable to that sort of thing but it kind of shakes it up in terms of the traditional view on gig work. So what if you were to explain to people, what would you say sets it apart from other opportunities like that? Yeah, great question. I'm I'm actually going through an investment raise at the moment, and this is the one thing that I'm trying to explain to investors. Um, you know, just how different we are to those those um, those kind of models like Uber and Airtasker and places like that. And and the easiest way I've, I've come up with to explain it is that they're a marketplace and we're a market maker. So that means that we actually help our contractors in terms of we train them, we give them support, we are the middleman around complaints, we um, do all the marketing, we get them all of the bookings, everything is all there ready for them to just get up and get going. And, and what really makes us different to those models is the recurring nature. So obviously laundry never goes away ever. It just keeps repeating over and over and over. And But for our contractors, that's amazing because it means they've got regular customers uh, who are rec on a recurring. So 80% of our customers are actually on a weekly or fortnightly just recurring service, um, which means that the contractors are earning very consistent earnings and they can, you know, plan ahead with their schedule a bit more. So it's not like Uber where you just go, you know, I feel like working today, I'm going to work for a few hours, which, you know, for some people that's great, but for a lot of our contractors, they want to have that consistent earnings because they know they've got to contribute to their family income and they want to, you know, work it around their their school pickup or their sports and all of those sorts of things. So when they have that recurring regular nature of, of customers, um, it can make a big difference for them. So, you know, so I'm always saying it's it's actually what we are doing is actually not really gig economy because gig economy means work when you feel like it get get you know money here and there whereas what we're offering is much more sustainable recurring income 
Um, and, and our contractors can be earning anywhere between $300 and $3,000 per week. And that really depends on, on their goals and their what they want to do. And so we work really closely with them around their targets to make sure that they're reaching those targets as soon as they can. You know, in some areas, they get to that really quickly. Uh, if they live in a city area, for example, if they're in a regional area, it might take them a little bit more time to build up to that level. But once they do build to it, then, then it can be really consistent. Um, and, and the other great thing about our model is that they can start in that smaller amount. So they can start with just earning, you know, $300 a week and just a couple of jobs on top of whatever else they're doing. Um, or And then they can build up and change their mind down the track. And that's what a lot of them do. They'll join us and go, oh, actually, I really like doing this. And, and I could quit that other thing. And I could just do this and, 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 you know, replace my income. And, you know, that's a great opportunity, I think particularly for women who are trying to juggle a lot (laughs) Um, and and men as well. We have lots of husband and wife teams and all Mm. sorts of things. So I really love that idea of the flexibility because that's the downside of going a business all by yourself, right? Is there's really, you want the flexibility, but you have to push yourself to schedule in that buffer time, right? And the first few years of having your own business the traditional way you're you're at it 24-7. I love the idea of being able to work with a company where the demand is already there. So you don't have to walk up and down the street and put flyers in letterboxes or, you know, put Facebook posts out saying you're available because that alone is quite a lot of labor heavy work, just trying to get your first few clients. And to have, a, you know, be able to do your, your um, picking up and dropping off around school hours, that's a really big thing for a lot of us. Not a lot of jobs are school hour friendly or, yeah, I can imagine the idea of being able to dip your toe in at the start and just make sure it's a good fit is a really, really appealing way to do it. So, yeah, all of those things sound fantastic to me. And Yeah, I, I think when you come from corporate, you often, you know, have jobs that say they're flexible and they fit around your school hours and you can change your hours around all of those things. But actually, that's that's just not what actually happens. And then you have bosses who don't believe in that and can be, you know, horrible to you if you're five minutes late and you're like, well, we couldn't get our shoes on this morning. Like you don't understand the stress of that. So, you know, being able to, and and we really, you know, help our contractors to be able to work their schedules around their life. So if they're doing that school run at that particular time of day, do your pickups on the way back because then you're in the car once instead of multiple times. And so we we really work with them to, to fit around their life. Yeah, I think that's a really nice way to do it. And I think that really needs to be the way going forward in terms of organisations and companies is that you know, that craving for flexibility, we all got a taste of it when COVID happened and we had to work from home and now we know it's possible to work from home. So it's a lot, you know, it's a lot harder for companies to do the old, well, you have to be here in person. But I think just being in charge of your own income and your own labour, but having the structure around you already and the support there already. And if you get stuck and you don't know what to do in a situation to have somebody to go to when that happens, instead of feeling like you have to wing it and problem solve. And even, you know, with things like Uber and DoorDash and stuff like that, you really are winging it the entire time, aren't you? You're just deciding on a whim to clock in and do some work. And you could be sitting there for ages waiting. Whereas your business model really is a service that's in demand a service that can be done from home, a service that's not reliant on minute-by-minute timing. It it ticks all the boxes as far as I'm concerned. But I know also you use a fair bit of technology and technology has played quite a role in the success of The Laundry Lady. I think that would really interest our listeners, how technology applies to your business. So are you happy to share how you've leveraged technology in terms of operations and enhancing customer experience? Yeah, so technology has it is very different for us today than what it was 12 years ago when I was the original laundry lady myself. Um, you know, back then in 2012 when I started, I, it was just literally a website and my mobile and that was it. <laughs> um, and I would turn some ads on when I needed customers and turn them off when I didn't need any anymore. Um, but, I, you know, as I said, I really always wanted to be able to scale and I knew that I would need tech to be able to do that because I knew I wouldn't. There was no way I was going to sit on the phone and answer every call. Um, and so I I actually applied for a grant. I got a $5,000 grant back in 2016 and I went off to my designer and I showed him this Uber-style 
design that a, a system that I wanted to create and he laughed at me and said you've got five grand you, oh. you're not going to get it that's going to be a hundred grand to create that so oh, um and he said go and find something off the shelf and um and we can integrate it into the website and so I didn't really even know what that meant at that stage but um I and and going back to 2016 there wasn't a lot of online booking and payment platforms out there that were off the shelf that like there is today um but I went out and I researched and researched and I found one called Timely which was creative for for salons um and I found that it could work and do most of the things that I needed it to do it you know with my vision to be able to scale um and so with the five grand budget we got it set up and got it integrated into the website and and got and went were off and running got my first contractor on board and um and and started but um, I got divorced and then I had to return to work full time and the business sort of took this back seat for a few years and became my side hustle for a few years. Um, but but with that tech, we still grew to sort of 12 contractors during that that time period while I was working full time and, and trying to, you know, just get it get it up and running. Um, and then after COVID hit, that was my opportunity to really come back to the business full time and and commit to it and so because we already had that that off the shelf system in place it meant we were ready to just start onboarding contractors and getting them you know out there and 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 getting them customers and so with that off the shelf platform we actually grew the business to 6 million in revenue so it got us a really long way but saying that mm-hmm. it also as we started to scale became much more problematic you know much more challenging there are a lot of things that it couldn't do there are a lot of things it couldn't integrate and, and connect to. Um, paying our contractors the commissions, for example, would take us three full days every single week just to create the reports around that because we had to do it manually. So we knew we needed to create our own tech, um, but that's a really hard thing to do for a business. It's expensive. It takes a lot of time. You've got to find the right people to help you. Um, so really, we were probably three three years too late than what we should have been to create that tech. But we finally did create it and launched it just at the end of last year. So um, it, it's our system that we call Time Boss. So that that powers everything in our business. Um, and and I guess what the advantage of, of getting that later in the business um, life cycle was that you know I had a lot of years of practice around the customer experience. So I knew exactly what we needed it to do, and um, and and that meant we could create it in a way that wasn't going to be wasteful but we still you know had challenges along the way within that finding the wrong people to create it and then having to start again and finally finding a really great developer who work alongside us to create um that platform and 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 launching it and now what I'm really excited about is that um it's a platform that will be a great platform for other service-based businesses out there and so we'll soon be starting to also go down that road and and um, give that opportunity to to other industries that want to disrupt and and do you know something similar to our model so um so yeah we're starting to sort of you know plan around what that looks like as well I love that idea because there'll be countless other service-based businesses that will want the same thing but won't want to go through all those hurdles of trying and testing and tweaking and scaling and having all the Mm -hmm. challenges that come with growing at the same time. So that's a really nice example of, you know, that sort of abundance in business where you're not going, hey, this is our thing. We're the only one that gets it. We don't want anyone else to use it. It's more like a no, this will work for lots of people and grow for everybody and more growth for everybody is great. So I really like that mindset behind it. So Yeah, good. absolutely. I think my whole career I've been involved in helping businesses and so, you know, from when I worked at Busy Chamber to when I was working at Austrade and so, you know, like trying to build a platform that takes you one or two years to do and hundreds and thousands of dollars like businesses just don't do it and that's why they don't scale because they don't have that tech behind them to be able to do that so we're, we're really excited to be able to do that in the future um, as it. well. Tech is such a, a labor-saving device and a time-saving device I just feel like this is we're entering into such a beautiful era when it comes to business and I know some people are like a little bit scared of AI or oh, this is how Terminator started blah 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 I love the flexibility and the innovation you can get with technology that progresses. I am super excited to see where it goes. And do you use it 
for onboarding contractors and customer service or just one or the other? How does Everything. It work? It's our entire business. So it's all of the booking management, um, all of the location and capacity management, which is quite complex when you have you know, people in different locations who are working different hours and setting their own hours and all of that. So there's quite advanced technology behind how that works. Um, Right through to payments. So we have really sophisticated payment options that integrate into things like NDIS um, and NDIS service agreements and all of that sort of automation, which um, which is that's a it's a, that's a tough area to try to, to streamline. Yeah. Um, but we we've built all of that in there, and then all of our commissions, which is actually nothing out there that can manage commission payments in a percentage structure like we have. You know, there's payroll, but there's not commissions. And then all of the onboarding and recruitment to just really automate and streamline that as much as possible. Um, And then lots of just boss tools as well. Well, You know, things like we've got energy management tools in there so that our contractors can... um, see exactly how much energy their washing machines are using and integrations into tax tools and and things like that and we'll be adding so much more around that as well so that's why we're really out seeking investment at the moment because we want to just build that to the next next level so um that that's what we're planning Oh, totally worth it. You touched on remote workers. Can we talk a little bit about that because that's one of the things I've been wondering is when you're scaling a business I would think it would be very challenging, especially if your contractors are all around the country, for example. So what were the things, did you have particular challenges with that, that you needed to implement something to overcome it? Was that something that made a big difference? Because it's not like you have an office full of people and you can just work one-on-one with them. They're literally everywhere. Like, what's that like? Yeah. So, I mean, our whole business is remote, even our head office team, some of us are are remote. So, um, you know, right from the beginning, that was, that was the goal. And, you know, and so even before COVID when they were, you know, Zoom now is obviously much more integrated into society, but before COVID, it, it wasn't so much, but even back then it was just very much building the business to be completely online. Um, so we never actually even meet our contractors, um, you know, at any stage. It's only if I travel for an event that I might go and connect with one and, and record a video with them and, and that's really great because I get to meet them. But, you know, we, we don't really get to have that um, face-to-face at, at all. So everything is is within, you know, those online tools with like Zoom and things like that. And then also all of our training is in, is online. And so, um, you know, when a contractor onboards with us, they go through a whole training and onboarding program. They have a knowledge base online, all of those kinds of things. And, and we're starting to build more AI into that now as well so that that can really streamline the support for them so that they can get that support faster and quicker and more effective because, um, you know, there's some great tools out there that you can just plug into, you know, your chatbots and things like that that you can plug into. So, um, you know, we're starting to get some of that set up so that it can support support that team even more remotely. Um, mm. But, yeah, it's definitely, you know, because you, you do never get that face-to-face. And for a lot of our contractors, they're quite happy with that because they yes. just – you know, they want to be just working from home and doing their thing and focusing on their own family or and life and customers and things like that. Um, but and then for others, they do want to be able to, you know, be part of a team. And so we we have, you know, team pages in Facebook and things like that as well so that they can connect when they when they want to do that as well. I love that because for me, technology means freedom and flexibility. Like if I was signing up for something, you know, what if I need to do it while it's late at night because that's when I finally got the kids to bed? Or if I'm doing my training, what if I only have like 20 minute pockets throughout the day where I can focus on something, right? I, to be able to do everything online. And in terms of affordability, I remember years and years ago, if you wanted to join, you know, a company, you had to think in terms of your travel costs and even just what you were going to wear, your parking. Like, to be able to have support online so that you didn't have to travel and actually get that in person at a big conference or a meeting or a training session in person, that actually has a really big impact on the lives of people who are caring for children and who might be caring for parents or might be working two different jobs. I actually think using the technology wisely like that is is one of the most appealing things about your business is that it's all easy, it's on demand is how it feels, you know, like Netflix but for business. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love that. I love that. Yeah, I mean, you know, as as a mum, like I know I juggle constantly around my kids and, you know, you only have these small pockets of time throughout the day and so to be able to fit 
your business into that, I think is really great. So, you know, our contractors, the only um, time thing that they're actually committed to is, is the schedule that they set up around when they're doing their pickup and delivery times. And then they've got the rest of the day to get their ironing or washing done. And, you know, for some of them, that might be they just come home, try and get it done while the kids are at school. For some of them, it might be, oh, I just had one the other day telling me that she gets up at three o'clock every morning because that's her favourite time of, of day to iron. And she own. does her iron. <laughs> Ironing then because yeah, just peaceful. It can be quite peaceful ironing, ironing at that time. I used to always do it at night because I loved watching TV while I was ironing. So you know, it's great to be able to kind of fit fit things around your life. And and then I think you know it, it, that that's very different to working in corporate where you might have a start and finish time. But it also means it, it doesn't feel as much like work. I think because yeah. it's just integrated into everything and and um, getting it done. Yeah, I'm quite an introvert, so it's very appealing to me that you'd be able to work, you know, first thing in the morning while everyone else is asleep or last thing at night or during the day while the kids are napping, right? And you're actually just watching shows at the same time, which I do every day as downtime. Why does one make some money doing it, right? I just exactly. feel like. Oh, <laughs> or listening to po- your podcast. That might well, be what yeah, they're doing as yeah. well. <laughs> Good idea, everybody. Listen to your favourite <laughs> podcast while you're ironing. I love that. Well, yeah, I think that's. Okay, so technology, I love the shareability in the way that you are so open to signing up contractors. I feel like it's um, there's not a lot of hurdles in terms of sign up, right? It sounds like it's very, very easy for people to do. Incidentally, do you mind if we tell people who are interested how, like where can they go if they want to sign up and do this for a job? Is that okay? Yeah, awesome. yeah, absolutely. So um, at contractors just go to our website and there's a join the team page and fill out the um, interest form on there and then they'll get sent all the information pack around how they join and, and what's involved and how our commission structure works and all of those types of things. Um, and, and yeah, it is very easy. They basically just need public liability insurance. They do need to have NDIS workers clearance, but we have all the links for that so that they can get all of that set up, um, uh, you know, at, and at register for an ABN if they don't have one already. Um, and then from there, they they um, they pay for a starter kit. So we set they start with a starter kit, which is four hundred and ninety nine dollars to, and that gives them supplies as well. And then they start their online training, and then we're ready to onboard them. So it's a really simple process, and and we've we've kept that starter kit at a really low price because there are franchise models out there which are hugely expensive to be part Thousand. of. Yeah, yeah. But, well, there's a there's actually one within our industry that's sixty thousand dollars to be part of now you will never make that money back you just won't you know and you want to be earning straight away that's why you're doing this yeah and so that's why we've kept it as a really low startup cost business so that they you know can can get started easily and and you know as I said we do all the marketing but they can also support that by, you know, within their starter kit, they have magnets for their car, they um, have brochures that they can hand out to people that they meet and all of those things as well to, you know, support their business in their local area. And just having your magnets on the car, you'd be surprised yeah. at how many people see that. So, I yeah. So have that available because I would have thought, oh, I've got to figure out how to put signage on my car and look into all of that. And NDIS, I wouldn't even know where to start. Like to, to there's those little, they seem little, but they're big things in terms of support. I love that. Yeah, absolutely. And payments, like you wouldn't, I mean, if you're starting a business and you're trying to manage payments, you know, that is really tough. Like it's not as simple as someone just pays by credit card and money's in your bank. It's a much more complex process. And so, you know, we've made that really simple for our contractors so that they can just tap in and and start earning. Oh, that's fantastic. And so what's next then for Laundry Lady? So once you've, in terms of got the, you know, the time bus stuff to the next level, are there other things that you're focused on or is that the main thing right now? What do you see for yourself in the next 12 months or two years? Yeah, so we're raising investment at the moment so that we can just really accelerate our growth. So, I, you know, we're really like there's still so much opportunity just in Australia, um, New Zealand. We've only just started in. We've got our first 12 contractors set up there. Um, and so, you know, just really expanding those markets and bringing lots more people to our team so that they can be part of it, getting them customers. Um, and and that's where the investment's really, you know, going to help us just accelerate that. Um, and then getting 
yeah, time boss really to that next stage so that it can support that scale and growth and bring lots more, you know, great tools and things like that to, to our contractors, improving our customer experience within that as well. Um, and then we'll be looking at international markets, which is really Ooh. exciting. So, um, we, yeah, we'll be starting to look at which markets we might go to. We're kind of eyeing off Canada and the US, um, UK, Japan. Um, they're the four markets that we're sort of looking at at the moment and, and and yeah, making our go-to-market plan, which is exciting for me, you know, coming from an international marketing background. That's, you know, I'm excited to to be able to, you know, scale our business that way as well. Um, so, yeah, lots of exciting things to come. Um, and, yeah, I'm pitching Time Boss at, at um, South by Southwest um in in October and and that will really you know help to kind of bring attention to that part of the business as well so lots of excitement around that and what that can do for 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 other industries out there yeah I love that nice big that building the awareness is really key isn't it because it's you know it's a big world out there and the online space is huge too so the more awareness you can give actually that reminds me what was it like going on Shark Tank were you nervous was it Oh my goodness. It was the most nerve wracking thing I've ever done. I was lucky. I didn't have too much time to think about it. It was only really literally a few weeks between when um, I had the crazy idea to apply and when I went on there, which was good because if I'd had a long time to think about it, I would have just been panicky. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, uh, you know, I was definitely on the day just feeling a little bit like I wanted to vomit and <laughs> thinking, what was I, what was I thinking? Um, and so now, you know, going out and, and, and pitching to investor groups and, um, and that all of the time, you know, I've, I've really had to kind of you know, get my pitch working really well and learnt, you know, how to make that that a great pitch. And I say to them, oh, my first pitch was going on Shark Tank. Like, why not do that on national TV? Crazy <laughs> in hindsight. But, yeah, really it was a fun experience. And and actually, you know, when uh, when the cameras were rolling, I actually, after I'd finished the, the actual pitch part and went into questions, I actually just really relaxed because I was just talking about my business and that's what I love. And so, yeah, I could re- relax into that and just – and talk about it oh beautiful I mean I'm really impressed that you did it and I'm so excited to see the next level for the laundry lady and I'm very excited for anybody out there who's listening who thinks okay this is the business model for me to have that support and structure built in to be able to jump in and get started right away with the training I just think it's a beautiful concept that you put together clearly it's working because people are loving it and I can't wait to see where it takes you in the next five years it's going to be amazing (laughs) thank you thank you so much (laughs) yeah so for anybody listening today who wants to know more from you guys what's the easiest way to find the laundry lady online is it website social media what do you think is the best way yeah just head on to our website laundrylady.com.au and if you want to make a booking and save yourself some time in your life and get on top of your laundry then you just type your suburb and you'll see the, all the laundry ladies and lads that service your area and leave your laundry at the door and they'll be there to pick it up, which is, you know, I get my ironing done regularly and it's I can't tell you how much time and stress that saves me to have my clothes just all ready to go in, in my in my cupboard, you know, ready to wear. Um, and, and if you're interested in joining the team, it's, it's the same website, laundrylady.com.au and click on the join the team and you'll get all that information. And um, and I would love for your listeners to be able to have a, a use our services and, and have a 20% discount off their first service to try it out. So Marissa24 um, is the code that you can use and and, um, and, yeah, check it out. Oh, thank you so much. That's lovely. And you guys do washing and ironing or washing or ironing, right, so people can choose whatever level they want. That's right, yeah. So it's and, you know, and for some people ironing might might be it just to stay on top of that and and you don't have to have a regular booking you know if, if you're getting your ironing done you might just want to do it you know when you're ready um or right through to washing where you want to have it regularly all of the time um and we have lots of business customers too you know like salons and medical clinics and airbnbs and places like that who have that regular yeah so um you know so we we service lots of those types of customers as well that is so Everybody cool. has laundry. There is a lot of laundry out there. Yeah, because <laughs> one of the things about being, I wouldn't want to be an Air, Airbnb host because I'd be like, oh, it's so, so much laundry. Yeah, why didn't I think of that? That's so genius. I love it. 
<laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Beautiful. All right. Well, we'll make sure we put that discount code in the show notes along with a link to your website and I'll do some stalking and check out your social medias and link them too if that's okay with yeah, you. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. We have lots of fun socials. They're very pink. That is our brand color. So it's lots of fun. <laughs> Beautiful. I'm so glad you were here today, Susan. I just think this chat is so perfectly timed because I think right now we're in a space where a lot of the people that I see talking online and in person, they're in that real sort of, oh, I feel crammed in my nine to five and I need something new and I don't know where to go sort of feeling. So I think that this solution is really good. But also in terms of customers, for people who are like, oh no, I'm fine on the work side, but I'm struggling with everyday life and I feel like I'm drowning and drowning and only just keeping my head above water. Your service is something that I think is going to really free up a lot of physical load, but also mental load in terms of having everything ready to go. So I really love that you're making such a positive difference from both sides of the coin I don't know if I got that saying right but you know what I mean right it's helping yes, everybody totally. <laughs> totally yes our tagline is take a load off your mind because oh. it, it is that mental capacity is just it's so much sometimes so you know and some of our customers then become contractors some of our contractors then become customers so you know it, it's it's really um you know that works for everybody <laughs> circle. yeah I love that oh thank you again for being here and everybody listening I hope that you've enjoyed this conversation as much as I've loved having it with Susan I'll leave all the links in the show notes so you can check out more and I will see you all in the next episode I hope you enjoyed this episode of the simpler business podcast if you did please subscribe rate and review us on apple podcasts There's a link in the show notes to make it nice and easy for you, just the way we like it. If you're ready to simplify and scale your business, you can get started with my free audio class at marissaroberts.com. See you next time.